Today we're going to talk about the most important relationship that you will have in this entire gig that is travel nursing. And that's the relationship that you develop with a recruiter. Have you ever had the opportunity to work with someone who over a period of time ended up becoming one of your close friends? Essentially, that's what every recruiter wants that I have ever met in this industry. Every one of them cares genuinely about their travelers. Hi, my name is John. I've been in this travel gig now for about six years and I have traveled all over the country. I loved it so much that I brought my family along with me and we've done it together. The recruiter is the person that essentially gives you access to this lifestyle. When you work with them, they're the ones that are gonna help you obtain whatever it is that you want. Remember that why that we talked about in the very first episode? Whether it's the travel, the money, or the adventure, the recruiter's the one that will help you obtain it. Remember in the last video that we talked about when we're talking about the agencies and those that are involved with working in them, the recruiter was the one that's kind of like the lifeblood of the agency, or maybe a better analogy would be to say that they're the heart of the agency. Their main job is to find travelers that are interested in working with their agency, and then take those travelers and connect them with the contracts that are best suited for them. Now, different agency and their recruiters will all function just a little bit differently, but there's a few things that they all have in common. Most of them are going to be the single point of contact that you as the travel nurse have with the agency. Now, there may be some differences. Sometimes you all need to talk to compliance and some agencies, like I said, that work differently. Sometimes you have different recruiters for different jobs in areas of the country. But most of the time, your one recruiter that you're gonna be with is the single person that you'll be talking to the most. When working with you, their primary purpose is to answer questions, provide support, help you with getting started, and they even manage paperwork and that kind of stuff between you and all of the other aspects of the agency, such as compliance. Another thing they're definitely gonna be involved in is assignment placement, submitting those contracts that you want to submit to as the travel nurse. They'll also be able to tell you things about the facility that you're wanting to go work at, how big it is, what shifts to expect, what unit you're going to work on, and scrub color. All sorts of questions that you may have about the facility that you're submitting to, the nursing recruiter is going to know most of those answers. They're also responsible for helping you with negotiations or requests that you may have. Maybe it's specific things like you want to work a specific shift or you want specific time off. If you choose to take the agency provided housing, generally your recruiter is the one who you'll go through to help organize and plan and even maybe pay for it. Nurses travel in different ways. Whether you do the RV thing like we have or you take the housing option, your recruiter is going to be primarily the one that you talk to about those things. Now we're going to have a whole video in this series all about that coming up soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that when it happens. The recruiter will also be the primary person that you're going to contact whenever you have an issue with your assignment. Whether it's a problem or just a simple mistake, they're your go-to person. One of the most fun parts of their job, at least from what I've been told, is the whole aspect of getting to know their nurses. A recruiter's job is to recruit, but it's also largely retention. And that means really getting to know the individual quirks of their nurses, things that make them tick. What's their why? What do they enjoy? My recruiter has always been great about knowing the fact that I travel with my family in an RV. So it does create some special unique circumstances, whether or not that's finding a park, RV park, that will cater to a family with children. And just also the size of our rig has been pretty big. So they've always been really good about making sure that those factors were kept in mind whenever we're traveling to a new destination. The best recruiters have a goal of basically becoming your friend and someone that you can wholly trust while you're on this journey. Now that you kind of know what they do, here's some things to look for in a good recruiter. Number one is gonna be good communication. If they're easy to get a hold of, in respect to their boundaries, of course, that's definitely what you wanna look for. Different types of communication, whether it's phone calls, texts, emails, IMs, whatever, walkie talkies, ham radio, whatever it works, however it works for you, being able to get a hold of them is paramount. You're going to need them sometimes at odd hours of the day and they expect that. Knowledge and experience in the industry is a plus. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean knowledge and experience as a travel nurse recruiter. Sometimes some of the best recruiters are nurses turned recruiters. They know the game or maybe even 
spouses of travel nurses turned recruiters. If you've traveled around and you've done this gig before, having that prior knowledge really helps you understand the game and will help you be a better recruiter. So you can ask around to see if anybody's got experience in that. Or if you've got somebody that's been a travel nurse recruiter for quite some time, it's a good thing. For very obvious reasons, it goes without saying that being open and honest is a huge part of this. And you're going to want a recruiter that definitely has those characteristics. For example, are they willing to explain in depth how something may work that you can understand it, like the bill rate? We're going to talk more about that in a future video, but it is one of the more complicated things in this industry and does take someone who really knows the ins and outs to explain it really well to a travel nurse. Advocacy is also important. Just as we as nurses advocate for our patients, your recruiter needs to be the advocate for you. You want them to have your back. Lastly, there's what I like to call the personalized approach or the personal touch. That is so important in this industry. Having that personal touch where you feel like you've got that friend is really a big deal. Do they genuinely wanna know about you or are they just interested in getting you placed? Now that we've talked about all the good things that you want to look for in a recruiter, it's time to talk about some of the red flags that you want to watch out for. The easiest thing to do in this is to watch out for all of the opposite of the good things. Is the recruiter that you're currently working with hard to get a hold of? Because that's a problem. Now, please keep in mind, you're not always gonna get an immediate response. If it takes a couple of hours, that's okay. But if you're looking at like 24 to 48 hours, especially if you've sent them multiple messages and they're still not getting back to you, that could be an issue. Misleading information is another issue that you really gotta watch out for. If you're presented with a contract and you submit for it, and let's say you get to the interview part and you're learning during the interview that this does not sound like what you submitted for. Maybe the patient ratios are different. Maybe you were told it's an ICU step down and instead it's just a med surge unit. Or who knows, maybe there's something that you're definitely noticing and it feels off, that's a problem. And you need to confront the recruiter about it and say, hey, look, this, this was like that. And hopefully they'll be open and honest and it was just a simple mistake because that stuff does happen on occasion but if you notice that it's a pattern over time and there it sounds like they're just trying to get you submitted to something watch out for that another one is bad tax advice um, the recruiter may know tax advice and they are part of this industry and there are certainly specific things that travel nurses need to do correctly for taxes but remember, they're not tax professionals. Lastly, it kind of goes with what we already said about misleading information, but that's like a pushy recruiter who just wants to get you submitted to something as fast as possible. If you have someone that feels like they're pushing you to take assignments that you just don't want, that's another red flag. Now you know what they do, how to find a good one, and some red flags to watch out for. How do you get connected with these people? Here are three of the most common ways and I'm gonna break it down with good, better, and best. First off is the good. One of the things you can do is go to a website that has a list of great agencies. I highly recommend Highway Hypodermics. They have the top 10 agency lists that they put out every year. You can go to that list, click on one of those agencies, it will take you to their website, and you can just click contact us and they will find you and hook you up with a recruiter or you may even talk to one that very moment. That's one way that you could do it, a social media type of referral. I like to think of these as the Facebook forum referrals, especially on a site like travel nursing newbies on Facebook, you're gonna have a lot of people that want to say, hey, I work with such and such at this agency and they're great, fantastic. That's a good type of referral because at least it's coming somewhat from a personal source. Now, I will say this, if you don't know, every travel nurse out there that works with an agency and a recruiter can get a referral bonus by having someone sign up with their recruiter that they referred personally. So it's in their best interest to refer you to their recruiter because of that. I will say I don't find too many nurses doing this with nefarious things in mind. They're not going to submit you or send you to a recruiter who isn't working well with them. Finally is the best option, and that's if you can talk to someone personally all about their recruiter. Maybe it's somebody that you work with or a traveler that you've noticed at your health facility that you've been working with and says, hey, I love who I work with. These are, this is the reasons why. Those are the best type of referrals because you can ask them about why their recruiter is so amazing and get one-on-one -on -one feedback about it. Well, what about working with multiple recruiters and agencies at the same time? This is a very common practice and is easily done. 
There are some things that you do have to pay attention to though. Advantage to working with multiple recruiters is that you're going to have access to more contracts that way. Each agency is going to have their own supply, if you will, of nursing contracts to be had. Now, some of those are going to be the same, and one of the biggest things you have to watch out for is making sure you're not submitting to the same contract with multiple agencies. That's considered bad form. We're gonna talk more about it in another video when we talk more about submitting. All that to say that you are not required to work with multiple agencies. If you do find one that you really like, you can just stick with them. I do. We've talked about getting started, finding an agency, and what you want in a good recruiter. In the next video, we'll jump into some exciting stuff as we talk about something I call the travel nurse trifecta that focuses on three things you'll need to consider when picking your first or next travel destination. So stick around and I'll see you then.